look Top floor, lifestyle, chef and boy, I'm cooking up Put too high, ain't coming down, you see me if you looking up I don't really talk too much, I show I'm running numbers up Lucky that I'm strolling up, I'm going up, they know what's up You join me on a very, very wet, muddy day. Now, there is something different about my bike, and I'm gonna show you that in a second. But first, we have to go back in time to last week. Kilo kindly sent me their P24F controller. They'd seen that I didn't really like my KO Nano and they thought, well, why not try ours? So I've fitted the controller now, as you would have just seen. It's plug and play, so it just, you know, they, it comes with a harness that connects to your original harness. And I'm really impressed with it. I have been putting it for its paces over the last five days. We have been having floods and masses of rain here, as you can see by the ground. The field opposite my house looks like a lake. But what, from what I have tested in the last five days, I can do 70 miles per hour on it. And I can still pop wheelies very controllably. Now, the only way I can describe the throttle on this, it feels crisp, like a BAC. If you've had a BAC and you've run it up to 12 kilowatts, you'll know the throttle is really crispy. That is what this feels like. But this has the added bonus of this lovely display. So here's the nuclear display. I've still got the protective film on it but you can actually reorganize any of these uh, parameters, these what the data that it shows. You can adjust the miles per hour to be GPS accurate, and you can actually adjust all of your settings on the go here. So look, as you can see, I've been riding for 31 minutes today. There's 15 miles on this, max speed 100. I haven't actually reached 100 miles per hour, but when I lift the wheel off the floor, it, it thinks it's doing 100 miles per hour. Third charge cycle on the controller. That's my regen, my max power used 15,000 watts. So on the KO, for example, I could only get this to pull 12 and a half. This battery is still not tripping the BMS, which is fantastic. A max phase current 444. So I've set this up to 500, but it's not actually pulling it. So let's go again. If you click that again, you can have your devices. You can adjust your onboard computer settings with the top one, or you can go through to your controller, which is the Nuclear P24F. From here, you have every single setting under the sun. Extra parameters is where you set your wheel size. Now for me, for some reason, I've set this to 750 millimeters to get it GPS accurate, but it works. And then I've got my motor sprocket and my wheel sprocket. Green is to go forward or like okay, and red is to go back. Important thing to remember, every time you change your settings, you wanna scroll to the top and you wanna press save settings. Otherwise, next time you turn your bike on and off, those settings won't be there anymore. I haven't actually set up my battery uh, charge level yet because I'm still at 64.4 volts. This thinks that I'm on a stock bike. I've actually probably still got 90%, 80% battery or something like that. Um, but I'm just reading it by the volts for now until I get this set up. So my friend Sylvan Jork, I'll put his Instagram on the screen now. He's been messaging me this week, just helping me get this set up as he's had it for longer than me and he's, he's used to it and knows what to do. So use your sprocket sizes front and back for it to calculate a GPS speed. So as you can see, five miles per hour, it's very accurate. Now, I've seen another channel on YouTube a bit larger than mine um, in America. They've reviewed this product and a few of the things that they said were not incorrect, but they were a bit 
skewed. So when you run this controller, you can run it on the Sauron, the MX-3 or the MX-4. Now they all have different motors. We found this in this drag race, I'll insert a clip here. Because although these bikes that I was racing had way more power, my bike still had a higher mid to top end. And that's due to the motor. Now the MX-4 motor is limited to around 8,000 RPM. The Sura motor is limited to just over 9,000 RPM. And the MX-3 motor is limited to just over 10,000 RPM. Now this is very important. You can't really increase the rated RPM of your motor. Of course you can turn on field weakening, but this doesn't actually um, do everything for you. You still need a higher rated RPM motor to be able to get up to these high speeds. So with this controller, I will say it's not a five minute job just setting it up and going for a ride. You need to ride it and adjust. With uh, controllers like the KO or the EBMX, you're gonna find that you can just slide a slider and it will say your field weakening is from zero to max and it'll give you percentages between them. With this, you get amps, so you can go all the way from zero amps up to 400 amps and every amp in between. You can set it anywhere you like. That's the beauty of this. I find personally, I have more control over what my controller is doing and I can tune my bike within an amp on every single parameter, which is absolutely fantastic. You've got different options for the display, fonts, readouts. I'm gonna show you now what that looks like. Oh yeah, just another little thing. So we're at red now, we can change the color of these buttons to suit whatever you're into so kudos this is a cool 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 feature so if you guys want to see how this controller is fitted to the bikes i'm going to leave a link in the description below where you can watch nuclear themselves fit a controller to the mx4 as well as the suron now the mx3 is exactly the same process as the mx4 and those videos are fantastic they go really in depth and they explain everything perfectly you do get a lot of extra accessories in the box but these are just mostly spares with the display, it's great as you can adjust on the fly. This is so much better than having to pull your phone out and risk damaging it. What I will say is that uh, Nuclear have a prototype app being tested at the moment in beta. So that'll be available soon for those of you that do want to use your smartphone. So guys, I'm going to give you my final thoughts on the P24F controller by Nuclear. So, so far I've been absolutely amazed by it. I think it's a fantastic bit of kit. In fact, it's gonna stay on my bike as my new controller. I'm no longer gonna run the KO Nano. I have it as a backup or spare just in case, or if I need to compare it to any other controllers in the future. Um, I'll explain my settings in a minute and I'll put some of them in, on the screen. So if you want this for your MX3, you can copy my settings and hopefully have the same outcome. Um, but yeah, some of the brilliant features of this controller that have really impressed me are the fact that it has a plastic surround which is fantastic as my KO Nano used to protrude and have sharp horrible edges that mud would get behind and actually sit behind the controller which as you know this is not really good because that mud stays wet and just rusts everything um, now I do have an aftermarket bash guard on here if you have the stock bash guard it does sit perfectly flush which is a good thing it also works with the upgraded horn delete so you're not going to have any problems fitting this controller regardless of what setup you've got for bash guard and horn delete um, some other features of this controller are that they have a patented design for the connectors. The connections on the back of the controller, as I put on the screen now, actually have a rubber skin on the back of them, which means when you pin the connections, it actually pushes through this rubber and creates a perfect seal, which is absolutely amazing. This controller will work all the way up to 100 volts, so you can use it technically in the future when the software is available, you can use it on an Ultra B. Um, the display has an LCD heater inside. It has a sensor on the top of the display which detects how light it is outside and adjusts the brightness accordingly. Um, the controller has the most crisp throttle response I've ever felt. Um, my brother runs a back, that feels really crispy. This actually feels better. When you go up high power on the um, Sauron with a back controller, you start to get some bit of uh, inaccuracies i don't know if it's just the bms tripping but this i haven't had anything and i'm running this on more power than i ever ran on my ko uh, the bms is handling it fine now some things to note on this controller um it isn't as simple to fit as the ko with the ko it was a case of connecting up the connectors and fastening it to your bike using the stop points with this one you have to remove one of the stop mounting points 
um, and then every single connection has its own cover on the back of the case, which I'll show you now. This is amazing because it means that none of these connections are getting wet. Uh, everything's sealed up really nice and tight, but it does take a little bit longer to install. So just have some patience. It's worth it in the end because the result is just fantastic. So guys, that's been it for today's video. I thoroughly recommend the P24F controller. In fact, I think it's my favorite controller that I've tried on the MX3. I'll leave a link in the description below where you can purchase it. Also, make sure to check out my Instagram. That will also be listed in the link below. As always, if you enjoyed today's video, drop me a like. Leave me a comment in the comment section below and hit that subscribe button. Next week, I'm going to be completely rebuilding my bike. The look of it is going to be completely changed. So stay tuned if you want to see that. My name's been Stingy Roger. And as always, you've been watching the Blood, Sweat and Gears YouTube channel.